Hi guys, I'm Matthew Flint. Um, I'm sure most of you know me by now. Uh, this is my creativity project, and I started with creating an abstract, which was what are the similarities that can be drawn between different entrepreneurial success stories when they had little to no money or just not enough to start the business that they wanted to. I eventually revised this to what kind of lessons can we learn from some of the most successful entrepreneurs in our industries, people that people look up to, and uh, what are some of the common traits or challenges that they face early on. So, rejection. Now, when you're looking up at the board, you can see people like Walt Disney, Steve Jobs, um, you can see Milton Hershey, and Fred Smith. But what you may not have known is that Walt Disney was, was told he wasn't creative enough at his first newspaper <laughs> artist job. And he eventually started a company called Laughagram, which also actually failed, and only was he a success after his characters caught on popularity, um, being aired in animations. Fred Smith, got a C- minus on his paper at Yale for detailing what FedEx would be, an express shipping service uh, for quick, um, quick transportation from place to place. Steve Jobs was booted from Apple in the 90s because he was using too many of the company's resources on creative products that didn't have application or weren't valuable enough. And Milton Hershey had three candy companies before Hershey's, <laughs> two of them being massive failures where he had to leave and, and he was an apprentice who was fired before he started the Lancaster Caramel Company. He did really well, sold and created Hershey's, which I'm sure all of you have had a Hershey bar today. Debt, so this is a really interesting one because I hate debt. I, I don't know, I'm adamantly against getting it, but many famous examples have gotten it in order to boost their businesses. Um, Kevin Plank being the first example, he used $20,000 of his life savings, along with $40,000 of credit card debt, which I can't even imagine doing, just to get the materials and supplies to make Under Armour. Eventually landed a contract with uh, Georgetown University for their athletics department and scaled it into a tens of billions of dollars, or no, hundreds of billions of dollars company that is Under Armour. Uh, Stonyfield Yogurt. So Gary Hirschberg started Stonyfield Yogurt in the 80s and by the mid 90s he had over three million dollars in debt to investors and other people who funded their equipment. Eventually he was able to get lucky enough to um, make his own factory uh, with another uh, round of debt from those <laughs> original investors and just as short as uh, 2017 uh, Stonyfield was worth $875 million, so it's worth it in the long run. Then uh, Hugh Hefner, um, the American Playboy is out on Amazon. I think it's a great show. It talks a lot about the entrepreneurial steps. Um, a lot of uh, visuals and whatnot that were just great, um, but it also talks about his debt that he took on. So in 1953, he took out $8,000 from family, friends, um, investors in the Chicago area, which is worth roughly $82,000 today, money that he didn't have, all because Esquire wouldn't give him a $5 raise <laughs> as a newspaper journalist. Uh, Playboy was at one point worth billions of dollars with uh, resorts across the world. And then innovation. So all of these people were able to take industries and turn them into something that they weren't before. Uh, Elon Musk, obviously with Tesla, um, all the major manufacturers, Ford, GM, etc., laughed off the idea of electric cars because they weren't practical. Then Tesla was able to come in, not only change the way that, I guess, cars are produced, but also how they're sold. So if you go to a mall, you can go into a Tesla store, look at all of the options and pick your car, which saves Tesla and, I guess, Elon Musk in a way, on the cost of upkeep and the cost of land for those stores. Mark Zuckerberg, well, I'm not sure if any of you had a MySpace. I did. <laughs> and then uh, Facebook came along and it kind of crushed MySpace uh, with no problem. Then uh, Travis Kalanick, <laughs> he created Uber. So um, taxis used to be a huge service in major cities, but why not just have that on the map? Uber was created and now across the world when you're trying to go somewhere. I mean, I know I don't use a taxi. I always use an Uber. I guess my key takeaways from the presentation were that all of these people had passion about the things they were doing, immense passion. They can work 12 hours a day without thinking about it. And they were 
were able to take the opportunities they saw and through perseverance and self-confidence, I'd say to a large degree, were able to become major success stories. And uh, I hope this uh, helps motivate some of you. I had a lot of fun researching. Thank you.